Welcome to the NBA Coast to Coast podcast brought to you by thelines.com. Coming to you from the West Coast, Josh Lander, joined by my guy Nate Weitzer on the East Coast. And we are looking at a little four-game slate here on a Thursday night, Nate, in the NBA. After a pretty big Wednesday night slate there we had last night. Definitely want to make sure to like and subscribe to that page. And this one, we're bringing you the Dallas Mavericks taking on the Brooklyn Nets. Also have a couple other videos up for you today, including our player props video that we are staying hot after another sweep to the night last night. 12-2 and two over our last three games on those player props are we. Also want you to head to thelines.com. That's where we have our great written content for you guys all season long. And our odds finder tool where you can go ahead and make sure that you are shopping NBA line and those player props to the best of your ability across U.S. Sportsbook this NBA season. Nate, let's go ahead and get into that little four-game slate and then talk about those Mavs and Nets. Yeah, and looking at that game first, we got Dallas minus 2.5 at Brooklyn. Brooklyn on a back-to-back here after losing in Milwaukee last night. Totals at 225.5 for that game. <clears throat> Clippers in an immediate rematch at OKC. They're minus 6.5 right now uh, after losing to the Thunder without PG. Kawhi and Marcus Morris don't know if any of those guys are going to play as they have another immediate rematch there and the Memphis Grizzlies minus three and a half at the Kangs that's the highest total of the night 236 so definitely one going to be that's going to be a popular target for DFS lineups and and some player props we'll get into and then the Heat plus six and a half at the Warriors that they were plus seven and a half about an hour ago uh, gaining some steam though after they won in Portland last night they traveled down the coast and that totals at 226 and a half <clears throat> so I mean this is part two of fade Brooklyn because they can't get a rebound that's basically the title to this show um, they once again played pretty well efficiently on offense and actually their best defensive performance of the year by far um, they came to play against the Bucks for sure trying to show that they had something against many people's title favorites. Uh, But that's going to hurt them on the very next night here because Katie and Kyrie both played 39 minutes. So I'd be very I'd be concerned. I don't know if one of those guys might just sit for rest, uh, especially if you fly back across the country. And in any case, yeah, they, they played well defensively, 107 defensive rating, which is way down from their horrendous 125 in the first three games. Held Milwaukee to 28% from three, but they lost because they got crushed on the boards, which is exactly what we said yesterday in that video that they, even when they held Milwaukee down, they lost 17 was the rebounding advantage. And if you get Giannis just waltzing to the rim for 43 points, you can't win games that way. <clears throat> you can't win games that way, as I say, again, with clear throat. Uh, and then, yeah, you talk about the Nets, you're like home court advantage. Well, not at all last year. Nine and 34 against the spread. There's probably going to be more individual Luka fans from the Brooklyn, uh, greater New York area than there are Brooklyn Nets fans. I mean, Luka is a, a major ticket. It's, it's true, people. I mean, that's how it is. That's how the NBA works these days, and that's how – People target buying tickets to certain games. So, <clears throat> yeah, the Nets, bad at home, bad on short rest last year. Again, I'm, I'm going back to that as a concern here. They were 3-11 and 11 straight up on back-to-backs. They were 10-18 and 18 straight up when they're underdogs. They're plus 2.5 here. Uh, if you're going to – no, I'm not even going to say it. But, I mean, the money line is where you would go with the Nets. You're not going to take that spread – if you think that they could pull out of it. I mean, they did show some signs of life at, at, at least trying to compete and being a little bit more cohesive and, and they just lost to the bucks, but, but yeah, again, no rebounds. You're not going to get any wins. Uh, at, still averaging about 29 defensive rebounds per game, which is a ridiculously low amount. Still one of the worst three point de- defenses in the league, despite Milwaukee missing a bunch uh, because they're shorthanded on the wing. And Dallas is a team that thrives, so spreading you out, hitting threes. Uh, I think Dallas should win this game. And I think they're being undervalued just because it was one of those stars out, bets up situations, right? Against no love without Zion and Ingram. Um, I mean, Nola has so much more depth than Brooklyn, just unbelievably far, far deeper and more cohesive and a much better coach in Willie Green. So I, I'm not going to fade the Mavs just because they lost that game. Uh, still the uh, number one rebounding team in the league. And when you have that big of an advantage over the Nets, I will take them in this matchup. Yeah. I, you know, it seems fair. I I, I kind of wish I would have stuck to my guns when we were talking about that um, 
that Dallas New Orleans game a few nights ago. And, and just when we said stars out bets up, it was like we did all this research to talk about why the the Mavs would, would basically handle the Pellies. And then in the middle of the video, we were like, ah, crap, wait, <laughs> this feels like a trap now. But once we realized that the guys like, you know, uh, like Trey Jones and other guys are going off for, for New Orleans all night. Um, and so you, you worry a bit more about Trey, Trey Murphy, rather, excuse me. But you worry a bit more about what, um, you know, what's going to happen in those situations when when guys like Luca and Christian Wood came out slow and they got punched right in the mouth. Well, Wood didn't even play until the second quarter, but they got punched right in the mouth right away. Um, and, and that's really what led to them needing to crawl all the way back from like a 20 point deficit, getting all the way back and then not realizing that the Pellies were still good enough to, to finish the game. I say all that just to say that's why this spread probably is even a little bit lower than it is. It's why, like, I don't really feel as worried about a trap game uh, for Dallas in a situation where they don't like last night was a trap game for the Bucks, uh, right? We talked about it. It was a situation where, um, you know, Brooklyn probably was at the very least had this game circled very hot, you know, very bold on their calendar. KD definitely wants another shot at them. He came out and scored 33 points, but it's also the way he did it. He forced it. He wanted to win that game so bad that he shot 41% from the field uh, and went one for four from three because he just wanted to go, 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 go. They gave him their best shot and Milwaukee still was able to, despite turning the ball over, not shooting well on offense, not playing well on defense at all in the first half, was still able to pull out a, a, an 11 point victory. So it's a similar type of thing tonight where there's a team that's much better than the other team uh, with a, a bunch more depth and a bunch more three point defense and three point shooting um, than, than the Nets. And that and that's the Mavs tonight. And that's why they're, you know, they're playing Mavs basketball in a lot of ways by not turning the ball over, playing incredibly slow, um, playing with, you know, basically a top 10, top 12 ish defense in the league right now um, and have not taken a single step back from losing any of the guys they lost last year, including Jalen Brunson, who is doing very well in the Knicks. Great trade. But th they didn't need another point guard like Jalen Brunson the way they needed another guy to come in and be able to score off of Luka, making him the third most efficient pick and roll guy in the league so far this year, which he's always going to be up there. And his usage in that play type is always going to be there, um, but he's never had Christian Wood. Kristaps Porzingis was somebody they thought could be that, clearly was not, and Christian Wood's coming in and doing exactly what he's expected to do, crash the offensive bl the glass after screening for Luka or get the ball on a pop or get the ball on a roll. It's it's really, really pretty to watch. We talked about it the other night. We also you know, went ahead and got those Christian Wood uh, props uh, for ourselves as, as they still remain pretty low. We'll probably talk about him again pretty soon. Um, and, and look, 62, 61, 63 splits, which is hilarious that the man can't make a free throw while he's shooting 62% from the field and 61% from three, they still aren't giving him any minutes, right? He still only played like 28 minutes last last game. If you saw Mavs Twitter was on fire <laughs> talking about J-Kid not playing Christian Wood and begging them to put their second best player in the game. And when he did, they were super efficient, but I, I, he might need to play increase those minutes for Wood um, because the, the minutes that they, that they played without him on the floor, their net rating was like 10 points worse than the, the, the moments that he's on the floor. Like, I know that stats aren't everything, but that's also an eye test, man. Come on, your team is better when, when he's on the floor. So I think we got to start seeing him get closer to 30 minutes. Uh, but either way, I'm just, like I said, three-point defense, three-point shooting. Brooklyn doesn't have it, and the Mavs do, so... Yeah, I mean, there's a few stats you can just look at that, like, wow, that's a gigantic discrepancy uh, in terms of, yeah, how the Mavs have an advantage here. They also are 11-6 and six straight up with a rest advantage. They do take advantage of that. And 16-4 and four straight up last year as road favorites, just taking care of business in this type of situation. Um, <clears throat> they've won four of their last five against Brooklyn because they do match up well with two wing stoppers there who can at least make it tough on Kyrie KD. And because they have a guy like Luca, who, you know, just kind of like Giannis can just go at his pace, get to his spots. And there's just no resistance from the nets on the interior right now, um, allowing a league high 58% inside the arc. So Luca, I hope he's not taking too many step back threes tonight because he could just easily his props at 32 and a half points. He's just expected to do whatever he wants out there. Uh, Joe Harris is back, which is a boost for, for the net spacing, but his defensive rating is you know, 124 this year. It was 112 in his last full season. So He's not all the way back in shape or they or it's just a lack of defensive cohesion altogether. <clears throat> and again, I go back to the Nets offense on back to backs, often because one of these guys is tired or out. One of their big two, they only scored 107 last year, just way down. They allowed 112. That explains the discrepancy <clears throat> uh, about Christian Wood. I mean, I think they're worried about his longevity a little bit in terms of giving him 30 plus minutes, but 
Also, the reason he's able to be so efficient is because he's only playing that limited amount of time. And he's got so much more energy and he's such a matchup problem for these nets right now. Uh, like if they have to put Simmons on him, if he's too quick for Claxton, uh, Claxton and Simmons are a disaster on offense with their spacing. So I don't really see a good path to victory for the nets. Um, and I, again, I wouldn't be surprised if we get one of those guys resting or just their minutes managed, uh, in this back-to-back situation. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. I think one guy on the nets who could potentially benefit from the fact that they don't have anybody to guard Christian Wood, Um, they don't really have anybody playing defense in general is Royce O'Neal. I mean, he hasn't done much on offense this season. I think he actually might be potentially limited in this game as well. Um, but he's a guy that you would expect like to come in and have a, a bit of a, um, you know, not a resurgence compared to Utah, but at least be a guy that was so crucial and uh, what he does is was so needed on this team. You thought he'd be able to, to help out there, but no, you said it with, with Dorian Finney Smith, Reggie Bullock, uh, especially those guys on the wing, um, you know, being able to, to really control defense a lot better than, um, you know, than, uh, uh, definitely Brooklyn just matchup problems all over the floor uh, for, for the Nets once again tonight um, just because this the roster construction is bad man so uh, yeah look the, the, we're going to keep fading these Nets we're going to keep fading these Lakers and it's not just because it's like enjoyable to watch stars um, and, and, and sometimes antagonists that we that we make up to, to do poorly but team chemistry is just too crucial man and you saw Kyrie yelling at Ben Simmons last night under the rim shoot it after he gave him the ball and Ben Simmons is standing four feet from the bucket and he catches the ball and turns around and looks at the three point line instead of going up with it and and Kyrie's literally yelling at him and then we see Russ getting into it with fans so that's going to be how I you know I feel pretty good about fading teams that we know can't really bring it stay together for a full four quarters uh, and play like a team so that is all the time we have for you guys in this one not to end things sounding like such a curmudgeon but definitely want to make sure you are liked and subscribed come back to that page as we are coming back to you guys each and every weekday with this with these game picks as well as our player props so until we see you next happy betting <laughs>